All right, so the cardiac cycle refers to the alternating sequence of diastole, which is the relaxation part of um, cardiac activity, and the systole, which is cardiac contraction. So um, in diastole, the myocardium relaxes so the chambers can fill. In systole, the, con the myocardium contracts um, to provide the increase in pressure to eject the blood. So the cycle begins with the atria relaxed, filling with blood. The atrioventricular valves open and the blood flows into the ventricles. The atria contract, forcing the remaining blood into the ventricles. Then the atria relax so they can start to refill again. The ventricles contract. The, a, the AV valves close to prevent backflow and the semilunar valves open and the blood goes into the aorta and the pulmonary artery and then the ventricles relax. So um, there's a really nice little um, graphic. Oh, I was in Seattle um, this summer and uh, I saw this boat. If you, um, I don't know if you can see if the picture's big enough, but the name of the boat was Diastole. And it has the little EKG lines right around the name. I thought that was super cute and very appropriate for this lecture. So um, when your heart's contracting, imagine you're on, or your heart's relaxing, you're on that boat. Okay, so this is the little graphic from the book on the cardiac cycle. So um, diastole, the myocardium is relaxed, the atria fill, all the valves are closed at this point. Um, then the increased atrial pressure opens those AV valves and the ventricles fill. That's number two, part number two. Part number three, systole begins, the atria contract, and they empty the rest of that blood into the ventricles. Now the ventricles are full. Um, then the ventricles begin their contraction. You know, it's slightly delayed. Um, and the pressure closes the AV valves to prevent backflow. And the atria relax at that point. Um, as the ventricles contract, it increases pressures in the pressure in the ventricles. And the semilunar valves, the aortic and pulmonary valves, open. And the blood is ejected into the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Um, then we go into another diastole where the ventricles empty and relax and all the valves are closed and we start over at the very beginning. The atria fill, the increased atrial pressure opens the AV valves, the ventricles fill, um, the atria contract and um, empty the rest of the blood into the ventricles, etc, etc. So I'm um, very uh, regular when the rhythm is working like it should, it works great. We'll talk later about what happens when it doesn't work great. So the heart sounds um, are basically the opening and closing of the valves. And um, so when you auscultate or listen with a stethoscope, you hear that opening and closing valves. They call them lub-dub, or um, I think it says lub-dup in the book, but um, that's what you're hearing with the stethoscope. And what you're hearing is um, vibrations from the closing of the valves. So when you hear your heart lub dub, lub dub, lub dub beating, the lub is the closure of the atrioventricular valves, the dub is the closure of the semilunar valves. So when you hear murmurs, it, um, it sounds like a swishing or a gushing maybe, and it's caused by incompetent valves. So the lub and dub are sort of the sound of the valves closing. If the, if the valves don't close all the way, blood can sort of swoosh through it and that's where you get that gushing sound. So um, your pulse that you can palpate or you can auscultate um, indicates your heart rate. So um, the a lot of times we're using pulse you can felt you feel your pulse um, and different uh, peripheral pulses you can feel and we'll talk about them but you're feeling with your fingers, not usually your thumb, because your thumb has its own pulse. And if you're taking somebody's pulse with your thumb, you might be feeling your own pulse rather than, <laughs> rather than theirs. So you um, place your fingers over an artery that passes over a bone or firm tissue. Um, 
and the surge of blood during ventricular systole expands the arteries. So uh, sometimes you are um, counting someone's pulse. Sometimes you're looking for irregularities um, such as uh, weakness or um, an arrhythmic pulse. Um, or an erratic pulse where it goes up and down. Um, the apical pulse is refers to the rate measured at the heart itself. So often you're um, taking the apical pulse um, with a stethoscope, you're auscultating. Um, a pulse deficit is the difference in rate between the apical pulse and the radial pulse. So the radial pulse, you take it um, at your wrist right underneath your thumb. And so there, if there's a difference between um, the apical pulse at the heart and the radial pulse, that is called pulse deficit. So um, cardiac output is the volume of blood ejected by a ventricle in one minute. And it depends on the heart rate and the stroke volume. So um, that's, that's how they calculate output is stroke volume times heart rate. So stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out of a ventricular contraction. And um, so the heart pretty much, at rest anyway, the heart pumps um, a volume that's equal to the, uh, the total blood volume in the body every minute, which is kind of amazing that <laughs> the blood is circulating that fast in our body. I mean, it really is amazing. So um, in response to different things, the heart can increase its volume, um, increase its output. So um, the stroke volume is going to vary with sympathetic stimulation and venous return. Um, when an increased amount of blood returns to the heart, such as during exercise, the heart is stretched more and the force of contraction increases. So during exercise, stress, or infection, cardiac output increases considerably. So um, the cardiac reserve refers to the ability of the heart to increase output in response to an increased demand. So if you have more cardiac reserve, you can respond to things more easily. Um, preload is the mechanical state of the heart at the end of diastole with the ventricles at their maximum volume. So it's the amount of blood that's delivered to the heart by the venous return. The afterload is the force that's required to eject blood from the ventricles and it's determined by peripheral resistance in the arteries. So if you have um, arteriosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, um, you're going to have more peripheral um, resistance and there's more afterload. So um, if you have a high diastolic blood pressure from excessive vasoconstriction, that's going to increase your afterload. So um, this is our little formula for cardiac um, heart rate and it has the averages there, which is kind of interesting. Um, so cardiac output is the amount of blood pu pumped by each ventricle in a minute. So kind of neat. It's a lot. It's an amazing amount of blood. So the heart is amazingly efficient when it's working like it's supposed to. So the things that affect cardiac output are things that affect your heart rate. So the sympathetic nervous system can affect that. And things that affect um, venous return, blood volume, um, nervous system, and peripheral resistance. So the systolic pressure, really blood pressure is talking about the uh, pressure of blood against the systemic arterial walls. So, um, so the normal blood pressure, what's considered normal, is um, 120 over 70 uh, millimeters of mercury at rest. So um, the, the high number, I, mean, I know you guys know all this stuff, but I'm reviewing it. The high number is the systolic pressure. The low number is the diastolic pressure. So the uh, systolic pressure is when the blood is ejected from the ventricles. Um, the diastolic pressure is the sustained pressure when the ventricles relax. So um, your blood pressure can be altered by cardiac output, blood volume, or peripheral resistance to blood flow.
um, when you exercise, you're um, increasing your cardiac output and it increases your systolic blood pressure. Your diastolic blood pressure shouldn't change when you exercise, but your um, systolic definitely does. So, blood pressure... Um, So changes in blood pressure are um, controlled by the nervous system and feedback mechanisms in our body. So if you, um, the sympathetic branch of the um, autonomic nervous system um, can cause increased output or decreased output. So when you have increased output, you get vasorestriction and increased blood pressure. Um, when you have decreased output, you get vasodilation and decreased blood pressure. So blood pressure is directly proportional to blood volume. Um, hormones can affect your blood pressure, so antidiuretic hormone increases your blood pressure. Um, aldosterone increase, increases blood volume, so therefore increases blood pressure. And the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone um, hormone cascade increases vasoconstriction and increases blood pressure. So a lot of the blood pressure medications um, target those particular things. They target the, um, they either they're a diuretic to decrease blood volume and decrease blood pressure, or they target the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone. So those ACE inhibitors, those um, decrease vasoconstriction and decrease blood pressure.